In today's Leeds news, Rutter disappointed, Banford enjoying football again, this week's loan watch, and Liverpool plan double swoop. On right, folks, you're here on the 14th of February, Wednesday morning with your Leeds United news after a fantastic result for Leeds United last night. Not just in terms of Leeds, Leeds game, but Southampton's game as well as has been shared on Twitter. Uh, the Leeds United team that are no longer in the race are in second place in the league. Now, Southampton do have a game in hand, but it would if they did win that game, it would only mean they're ahead of Leeds by a point. Ipswich have Millwall tonight, that could do us a little favour in moving away from them as well as their form has dipped massively this season. It was an excellent performance last night, it was clinical and what was needed, it could have been more. Again, Daniel Farke has talked repeatedly about Leeds' efficiency in front of goal. I think last night, especially in the first 10 minutes, we saw that coming back to what we wanted to be. It could have been more, we could have taken more chances, we could have passed the ball earlier on the edge of the box, we could nitpick. It's an impressive 4-0 win and it keeps Leeds' unbeaten run going. However... We have a lot to be happy about, except not everybody was happy at the end of the game last night. Georgino Rutter being one of those players. It was a fantastic performance by the entire squad last night. There was a huge amount to be happy about, but Georgino Rutter looked visibly disappointed when coming off the pitch. Um, something we're not used to seeing from Jorginho Rutter we're used to seeing him with a smile on his face he was very involved in the game last night he could have scored himself last night and I think that's where some of the disappointment appears to have come from after the game Daniel Farke explained why Georgie looked as annoyed as he did coming off the park and Farke pointed out that it was a similar situation to Pat Bamford last week where when they're involved in a game where there's plenty of goals and you know there's more goals and you come off the park having not scored you're disappointed to not get on the score sheet Frack did point out that Georgie contributes an awful lot more than just goals and assists. And I think we can all agree with that. His defensive work at times striking back since he's gone into the number 10 position, he's been phenomenal. And I don't think it's 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 a surprise that that has also coincided with Leeds' really, really strong turnaround this season and been very, very impressive. He's impossible to mark. He has been fantastic to watch. And Frack basically said that when he did sub him off, he was disappointed that he didn't score and he wanted to stay on the park to try and get a goal if he could. But Farka said he has to think about the bigger picture. Farka has this difficult decisions that he has to make with these players. And he said when you look at the bigger picture, there is the schedule to take into effect. Farka has talked at length this week about the fixture schedule and about how unfair it seems to be on Leeds with these midweek late games in Swansea and then a very early kickoff at the weekend against Plymouth. We have to travel down to that game as well. A bit of common sense seems to be lacking from the Football League. But Farka talked about that and he said he has to kind of protect the players and that's why he took Rutter off in the game he did go on to say though that it wasn't all bad and Georgie was back to his bubbly self in the dressing room a few minutes later back in the dressing room which is good to see it was notable that that Farka does tend to spend some time on the pitch with his arm around these players talking to them straight after the game while decisions are fresh and he did have a good long chat with Rutter as he came off the park he had his arm around the shoulder you could see he was talking to the player and that's really important he has a very strong bond with these players currently you can see that and it's important that he um, addresses these kind of things straight away we saw him do it with Pat Bamford last week and Bamford came off the park as well and looked disappointed that he was coming off Farke grabbed him stopped him for a second just explained the decision it's a really good thing to see players are disappointed because it means they want more and that's always a good thing when it's expressed in the right way you're not pushing people out of the way or slapping hands down when it's expressed the right way, it's great to see. So, um, yeah, Frack is doing a cracking job with that. And you can see that this is a happy group of players playing really good football right now and really happy in what they're doing. Uh, speaking about Pat Bamford, and he was speaking to LeedsUnited.com this week and says he's back to enjoying his football at Leeds, which I think we can all agree we can see pretty clearly. He's playing with a smile on his face. He's enjoying his current goals with his chicken wing. Uh, Bamford did pick up Leeds United's Player of the Month for January, which was lovely to see as well. And he basically said that he is back to being happy at Leeds. He's back to play, being happy playing football again, which has contributed to the form. I think the goals he's starting to get as well are, are, are starting to help him. He did score his first goal since April this season. So it was great to see that as well. The other thing as well on the Player of the Month award, I think if we look back a few months ago, I think it would have been something that none of us would have imagined that Pat Bamford would pick up at least. So showing the, the turnaround in his form this season has been excellent. And he has contributed massively to what has been a very strong start to this year for Leeds United, the unbeaten run. Bamford has been a huge part of that, leading the line in the number nine position. Not always with the goals, not always with the assists, but the work that he does in occupying centre-backs, we've talked about that before on the channel. So it's been really, really good to see that. And it's great to see him back playing with a smile on his face. He has played a key role and long may that continue this season we did say earlier on this year that a a fit and a happy Patrick Bamford is an asset in this division 
the job was to get him fit and the job was to get him happy he's in that position now as well and again you can see the work Daniel Farka is doing with him as well and the trust that he's putting the player as well uh, Joe Pirro playing number 9 last night against his old side scoring a goal as well but there is a very d distinct difference between how both of them play uh, and it does add to Leeds as well but uh, sorry Pirro was a very strong threat in the first half specifically last night as well so yeah it's great to see Paddy back enjoying himself and great to see him picking up that award and fair play to everybody who voted for him on that award as well to get him there there's um, you know we can push past the stuff that happened earlier this year and last year and focus on the now. So it's great to see that. Uh, we're going to crack into this week's long watch before we get to the main story of today, which will be coming up after long watch. So let's crack on and get into that now. Jeremiah Mullen started for Inverness Caledonian Thistle and played 70 minutes in their loss to Hibernian in the Scottish Cup. Two games for Ian Paveda this week. He started at the weekend and was man of the match for Sheffield Wednesday. He was a 66, played 66 minutes last night for them in their loss to Leicester before coming off the park. Diego Llorente was an unused sub in the new look Daniel De Rossi AS Roma in their 4-2 loss to Inter Milan last night. Rasmus Christensen found himself in the same position, an unused sub in that game as well. Interesting with both those players now no longer part of the starting eleven. Will Llorente come back into that team? Christensen might struggle. Lewis Bate, 90 minutes in his for the second game in the row for MK Dons at the weekend. He was on the bench in midweek this week, but did come on the 72nd minute. Darko JB, 90 minutes for Plymouth in their 3-1 loss to Sunderland. Will not be allowed to play against Leeds this weekend, but has been very good for Plymouth since he has gone there. Max Vober returned from injury in a nil-all draw for Gladbach, played 72 minutes in that game before being withdrawn. Brendan Aronson's cameos for Union Berlin continue a second-half substitute in their win. He came on in the 59th minute. Jack Harrison, 90 minutes in Everton's 2-0 loss to Manchester City, his eighth straight 90 minutes in a row. Mark Rocket continues his very strong season and starred in Betis' 2-0 win at the weekend. Luke Ayling, again, 90 minutes for him as he continues to regain his form at Borough in their defeat against Bristol. Cody Drama was an unused sub for the second game in a row at the weekend. He is returning from injury and he did start last night in Birmingham's 1-0 win against Blackburn. Sam Greenwood played 80 minutes last night for Middlesbrough as well. Uh, and also, I know he's not on loan, but uh, Sean McGurk did score his first goal for Swindon last night. And if you haven't checked it out, you should, because it's an absolute banger of a goal. I'm delighted for the kid. It's a great goal. It's a great goal. And you should have checked that one now. Uh, moving to the final story of today. This one might irk a few people, but we'll... Um, We'll talk about it. According to Steve Pearson, Liverpool have a firm interest in not one, but two of Leeds United's youngsters. We've already seen this year Finley Garman pinched from the Leeds United Academy from Manchester City on what will be a British transfer record of in and around £5 million. Now, according to Pearson, Liverpool plan to outbid any rivals for a Leeds United duo of Archie Gray and his younger brother, Harry Gray. Archie, as we've seen this year, has been in excellent form for Legion United's first team. And Harry Gray has been banging in the goals through the under-16s, 15s and the under-18s when he has been given those stretch assignments and moved up to the under-18s side. Like, and as Jerry McDermott said on this channel last year, keep your eye on Harry. He'll be one of the hottest young strikers in Europe in the next couple of years. Well, Liverpool are having a real sniff around the player as well. Man City had a look as well when they brought Finley Gorman in. There was a lot of strong rumours saying Man City were also interested in Harry. According to the report, it says that Liverpool would be likely to pay £50 million for Archie and Harry if they can. And they see it as an investment in the club's long-term strategy. It's a big part of football now. You see the price of players, Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland. You see the price of these players that are out there at the moment when they're turning 21. And I think it's what you're seeing now is, and what we've seen with Finley Gorman, is clubs are now moving to a younger age bracket and they're trying to get the next big thing before they become the next big thing. Pay £5 million for Finley Gorman before he's potentially worth £100 million in five years' time if he develops the way they think he will. Same with Harry Gray as well. Get him on the cheap now and see if he can develop to a player that will be worth a lot more money in the future. Leeds will need to keep an eye on both of Harry and Archie. Archie's already talked this week about the rumours in January and the summer and said he'd no intention of leaving Leeds. Both players have a deep-rooted history being Gray's with Leeds United, so you would hope that that would be something that would keep them at leads folks that's going to be for me today massive thanks as always for supporting the channel you can check out yesterday's news down below if you want to as well and you can support the channel by liking and subscribing if you want to we're nearly on 23,000 subscribers so thank you very much as always for everyone who has liked subscribed commented anything really really do appreciate it and as i always say agree or disagree i appreciate it have a cracking rest of your day and i will talk to you tomorrow morning for more leads news see you then bye